Today we're going to be blind flighting three of the best bourbons released this year. Who's going to come out on top? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back to Neat Bourbon. My name's Tanner, and today I got a special treat for you guys. We're going to be blind flighting three of the best bourbons that I've been able to collect this year. And as always, I had to throw this bottle in the mix. This is the 2022 uh, Four Roses LE. Now, this is the 22 release. I did actually get it, you know, in the first quarter of this year. So I wanted to put it in the mix. This is one of the unicorns that I have. It's in the same proof range as these. I think it'd be great to see how it stacks up against these beefs. Now, I've already uh, taken the liberty to have the glasses poured. Everybody already knows the stories of all those bottles. You know, the Russell's Reserve 13 year, that bottle is an absolute beast. The Michter's 10, arguably probably my favorite of the bunch, but you know, I haven't had the opportunity to put all of these up against each other. So I'm really curious to see you know, how they all stack up and can I actually pick out the differences. Now that uh, the Four Roses LE, just wanted to throw that one into the mix. I absolutely love that bottle and uh, it's in the same proof range. So figured it would uh, be good to include. If I'm popping them all, might as well throw the other one in the mix too. So let's go ahead and get in the nose of glass one. Yeah, a lot of, lot, lot of cinnamon, the deep, deep, deep rich oak notes. Man, that is sweet, almost like a sugar cane sweetness on like with a little dark chocolate there. Man. I mean, that one, you know, jumps out of the glass. Let's see how. Wow. Glass two is much more faint. Surprise. But hey, let's get in the palette on glass one. Cheers. Ooh, that is nice. Not quite as like over the top robust as I was expecting. This is my first sip of bourbon of the day, but a lot of caramel notes coming through. Definitely getting a lot of that sweet oak. Man, that, that oak on the nose is just freaking delightful. Man, a little bit of like, uh, almost like a cherry peel. Man, that's going to be good. I don't know if anyone can tell, but all these glasses look to be about the same. None of them are, you know, peeking out to be darker than the rest. So but let's go ahead and get in the nose on glass two. Yeah, the nose on two is definitely still a little more faint, but still picking up a lot of similar characteristics. A lot more like, like dark chocolate. Man, and that sweet oak, I mean, it's a heart like dark, dark chocolate sweet oak there. That is awesome. Whoa. That one, the oak is definitely very prevalent on that. Got a lot of like butterscotch sweetness coming through on the palate as well, but a lot more heavy oak punch there on glass two than glass one. I almost think that like one is a, a little more complex to be able to pull up a few more notes. Um, two is, you know, hit, hit me hard with, with, with that oak. And let's go into glass three. Dang. Man, three just jumps out of the glass. Like, whoa. That is not getting as much oak. But that's very fruity as well. There's a lot of stewed berries down there. Man, I don't want, I mean, one and two are pretty tight, but this one, I don't know, I could live in this class if it was me, but. Yeah, definitely getting a bunch of the, the oak punch there, but this one's a lot more of like a fruit medley on the palate, you know, more so than one and two. The oak definitely stood out to me in two with like the heavy butterscotch coming through. Yeah, this this one's just 
the the fruity notes and like the dark cherries like like mixed berries coming through there on the nose like the, the, the oak is present it's not overwhelming by any means this one is man it's a little bit lighter um, you know proof wise I think than glass one and two but overall that glass is like perfectly put together um, I think that one's going to be tough to beat, but see, uh, glass four. Man, I'm getting like Krispy Kreme donut. I know that kind of sounds weird, but like a maple glazed donut there with a little bit of like cherry mixed in there as well. Like a, a little bit of sweet oak, not, not as much as, as glass two, definitely more, more than one or more than glass three. Man, that, that's a, Man, that one's, that one's viscous. I think this, like glass four, is similar to glass three, where it's a lot sweeter, it's got a fruitier profile, the oak punch is there, it's a sweet oak, it feels like, like pretty well complex on the palate, like similar to glass three, very complex. Um, I mean, all of these are gonna be, you know, complex, but I mean, I don't know. The sweetness off glass one, you're getting a lot of the oak on two, but getting leather on that. Yeah, I got a, got a lot of leather on that, like free leather, if that makes sense. Like if you rolled a fruit by the foot up in a leather belt and then ate that. Um, none of these are like drying, but like I can... I like leathery note, like the viscosity of it, you know, it's kind of like sticking there on the tongue. Man, yeah, I don't, I don't even know uh, what I'm, like all of these are insanely good. Definitely the, the oak presence on glass two sticks out the most right now. I'd say like these three feel like a little bit softer, like, um, but there's like so many different notes I feel like you could pull out on the palate. Glass two is just like a freaking flavor bomb of, of oak and that, 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 that butterscotch caramel is just all over the palate on that. But, you know, I'm going to go back through these and then uh, we're, you know, going to you know, give them all another nosing, put them all up against each other, and then we'll regroup for some, uh, for some final thoughts. All right, welcome back. So I've had a chance to go back through these multiple times, put them all up against each other. Went back and forth, back and forth, and I think I've come up with the order. This was incredibly difficult to segregate between all four of these. But um, honestly, this, this glass here, glass two, I thought was definitely a little bit better than the competition. The, the heavy oak notes with all that like butterscotch caramel was coming through up front. And when I was going back through, comparing them back and forth, I was like the fruitier notes started to come out like Almost like if you took like a, a sleeve of like those hard candy Jolly Ranchers and you melted them all together. I was getting like that kind of like, like, you know, sugary sweetness, like fruity notes coming through on the palate. And it was just in, like an incredible, incredible experience. Um, I went back and forth on two and three for like quite some time. Um, ultimately, I just thought the nose eked out a little bit more robust on one than four. Um, and then, and it pains me to say this, but I think that this one was just a little bit like lighter on the palate. I want to say that this one's the Mictor's 10 and I don't know if it is, you know, I'd be a little upset because that bottle's an absolute freaking beast, but it is only 94.4 proof. And I think you could kind of taste that lack of proof whenever you, when all the others were, you know, 107 to 114. This one was still incredibly complex. The fruity notes, the oak, like perfectly balanced in my opinion. Nothing was like, you know, over like, like competing with each other on the palate. So absolutely love this bottle. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go fourth place. We'll, we'll look at what fourth place is. And fourth place is glass one. Damn. All right. So fourth place. We'll put it over here. We'll go fourth place over here. So, Mictor's fourth place. Hate to see that one. I don't know. This, this bottle's so good. 
for it to be considered fourth place. Um, third place is glass number five. Whoa, man. The Four Roses LE. I thought that one was going to be the Russells. Dang. So, Four Roses LE coming in third. Now, that leaves second place. Glass, no. Wow. That is the freaking Jack Daniels. What? I was convinced that with the amount of oak that I was, I get so much oak on that Jack Daniels, I cannot believe that. And that means today our winner, the Russell Reserve 13 year. Now this is batch two. This is a blend of the 13 and 19 year whiskey. So, wow. I can't, I was convinced that this Jack Daniels was right here. Wow. So, yeah, overall, this was an absolute beast of a blind. I am really excited that I was able to do this tonight. And also, I just want to say thank you to all the subscribers, subscribers out there. You know, the channel is reaching like 225 subscri subscribers right now. That's absolutely amazing. I really appreciate all the support. I love reading all the comments. I really appreciate all the love you all and support that you all have been giving me over the last you know month and a half or so. So, as always, you know, I really enjoyed doing this blind for you guys. This is Neat Bourbon. My name's Tanner. And as always, pop the bottles and share the pours. And we'll see you in the next one.